Up next on the Met Report, former President Oscar Sanchez visits our school. The SGA election is coming to a close. We have the candidates running for your votes. And an EMET will take you on a magic carpet ride with Disney's Aladdin. It's Friday the 13th. We show you some of the superstitions our athletes have. The Met Report starts now. Thank you for joining us on the Met Report. I'm Greg Gonzalez. And I'm Nekta Skandari. Nobel Peace Prize winner Oscar Sanchez will be joining us today in the Tivoli Turn Hall to take, uh, to, for a public lecture. This event will be taking place from 7 to 8.30 p.m. If you're interested in attending this lecture, make sure you get your tickets before the deadline because seating is limited. At the door, people will still be admitted to go in, but only if there's available seating. Don't risk missing out on this event and this once-in-a-life opportunity. Is organic agriculture a fad or the future? Students came together in the Tivoli Turn Hall to watch a live stream open forum on the controversial topic, People and the Planet, discussing the complexities of organic farming. The event is part of the 70th Annual Conference on World Affairs at the CU Boulder campus. The panelists included an organic specialist, a professor of chemistry, and the owner of Cure Organic Farms. Indeed, organic food is becoming increasingly popular. For some, it provides a healthy connection to their food, and for others, organic farming promotes healthy ecosystems and health-conscious industries. Elections are coming to an end, and if you haven't had the chance to research your candidates, the Met Report has you covered. The two presidential candidates are Justin Darnell and Daniel McCullough. Darnell has quoted, I will do everything in my power to help all students achieve their goals. McCullough states, I want to make campus education better. The sole vice president candidate is John Andres. He hopes to make a more diverse student government. Elections close tonight at 5 p.m. You can still vote at ahec.edu slash vote. Well, Greg, um, you know that summer is approaching when the SGA elections are coming to a close. Who are you going to vote for? Uh, well, I'm going to be voting for Mother Nature because I'm totally over the snow right now. I know. And after having an awesome week of sunshine, uh, waking up to snow this morning was Super wild. And yeah. speaking of weather, Kaylee, what are we expected to see this weekend? You guys are definitely right. So as we woke up this morning, some of us saw like one to three inches on the ground. And that is because we have this low pressure system that's coming over the Rocky Mountains. And so when the clouds are forming, we'll see pretty much see most of the clouds cover most of the day today and into tonight. Now our current conditions, it is 43 degrees. It feels like 32 and winds coming out from the north at 31 miles per hour. And now for today, we have p.m. showers and winds, and our high today will be 43. Winds coming at the north at 42, so pretty windy day today. And then for our daily planner, we are going to see our, our high around 1 p.m. at 40, and then at 38 around 5 p.m. And we are going to see those showers start building up back again around lunchtime and into tonight. Now tonight, we are going to have a cool down a little bit to 28 degrees. It is going to be cloudy and windy still, and winds are going to come out from the north at 23 miles per hour. Now up next, we're going to have colder temperatures return next week warm-up and our extended outlook. Figuring out which classes you need to take for this semester and which professors that uh, and which professors to take can be frustrating and confusing. Many advisors and students attended the Regipalooza event that was held in the Student Success Building on Wednesday and Thursday. Those students were able to get help determining which which classes would be the most beneficial to their degree progress. There were also other services to help students with all aspects of college. Immigrant and Career Services had a booth along with the Writing Center to talk about what they do and how they can help. The Dungeons and Dragons Club hosted an event for MSU students to showcase the basics of D&D. The students gathered at the Student Success Building on the second floor. On this day, players crafted their very own new characters. Everything from sorcerers to barbarians were created just for the day's game and player was pitted against player in a massive melee. If you're interested in getting in on all this action, come to the Student Success Building, email the D&D Club at dnd at msudenver.edu, or visit their Facebook page, Metro Dungeons and Dragons Club. Yeah. 420 is near. Find out later where it's safe to smoke. And the National Guard marches to the border.
mymapmedia.com. It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on Wheel, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell, America. Let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. The Met Report has the latest on volleyball, men's and women's soccer, and so much more. Tune in every Friday at 12.30 on Comcast Channel 58 and Campus Channel 20. I'm Juan Arellano and this is the Centro Futbolero. Rent, oh. Rent prices are increasing yet again in Denver and there are a lot of reasons why. Rising population in the metro area comes with the need for more homes. Rent has gone up 15.7% since last April. A big factor is the high demand for apartments. Another factor is Colorado's economic growth and that the state has been ranked high for job opportunities. A Denver Charter School teacher was able to come on down to the Price is Right. Lexi Dunnels, an algebra teacher at Strive Prep Charter School, used the teacher edition of the hit show to promote her school and to represent her students. Dunnell even wore a Strive t-shirt to show off her school pride. Her students were just as excited as she was when she was on the show, and when the show aired, she hosted a watch party for her class to show how well she did. Last year, a cyclist bill was proposed that would allow cyclists not to stop at stop signs. Colorado lawmakers are now discussing a proposal that would allow cyclists to ride through stop signs and treat them as yield signs. Although when it comes to red lights, cyclists would need to stop completely. However, if there is no traffic, they are still allowed to pass through. The individuals that support this bill believe that this would make the streets safer for cyclists and drivers alike because both will be more aware of one another. The law is not yet passed but remains a hotly debated topic. Colorado distilleries, distilleries are on the rise and residents could not be more pleased. Colorado is not only home to a growing number of local distilleries, but even hosts the largest beer celebration on the planet, known as the Great American Beer Festival. As of 2017, Denver officially claims at least 348 breweries and counting. It comes to no surprise that Colorado has unofficially been named the Napa Valley of Beer. You don't need to look far for Colorado's famous beer culture. No matter where you are, it's just usually around the corner. Earthquakes in Colorado are rare, but it does happen. One occurred last Saturday morning. Only 18 miles from Glenwood Springs, an earthquake was registered. The earthquake's magnitude was 2.7, and since it was relatively small, a small shake, there was a small amount of people who could feel the quake. As of now, there has yet to be any reported damages from the effects of the earthquake and in any of the surrounding buildings in the area. Well, Greg, 420 is next Friday, and I know a lot of people are getting excited about the big day. How can we help the students stay informed while staying lit? That's right, Yekta. I sat down with Police Chief Michael Phibbs about how to play it safe while getting stoned. Grass, ganja, dope, herb, Mary Jane, the chronic, the devil's lettuce, reefer, blaze, wacky tobacco, and grandma's broccoli. With 420 quickly approaching, the students of MSU Denver find themselves asking the moral and existential question of our time. Where can we get high? We sat down and asked Deraria Campus Police Chief Michael Phibbs for more on responsible marijuana use. So in Colorado, the Constitution allows you to get high in the privacy of your own home, essentially, or non-public places. But how high was I allowed to be while out and about? Where you got high is the privacy. Where you go afterwards is, is not regulated. Some of the things you do afterwards is regulated, like driving, for example. Right. Um, maybe your workplace has rules against it. Um, maybe it's not a good idea if you're paying for an expensive education. 
to go to school uh, under the influence, but I guess those are choices adults get to make. Yeah. But what if we get stoned at school? Kind of a variety of things. It really depends on who you are, uh, whether or not you're part of our campus community, how old you are, uh, if we've contacted you before or not. So the campus is still a, a no zone for marijuana. Uh, there's also a Drug-Free Schools Act uh, that marijuana is still under uh, at the federal level. So um, don't bring it to school. There's just no need to have it here. Um, you know, we try to be understanding. Um, most of the time, people get warnings the first time, but, um, you know, warnings don't go on forever. For the Met Report, this is Greg Gonzalez, and happy 420. For all the parents in Denver, there's a new shuttle service available to transport their children. Hop Skip Drive was recently developed by three mothers who needed help getting their kids around. They expanded the service to other parents in the same situation. Parents are able to schedule a ride seven days a week, get a chance to meet the driver, and also track the ride. The process for hiring a driver for the service is actually quite extensive. One of many requirements for the drivers is to have at least five years of child care experience and a solid driving record. The office of Michael Cohen, former attorney for President Donald Trump, was the target of an FBI raid on Monday. The raid came as a referral from lead Russian election interference investigator Robert Mueller. Information uncovered during the investigation was passed to New York state prosecutors. From there, evidence of payments to women who had alleged affairs with Donald Trump, such as Stormy Daniels, as well as information regarding Michael Cohen's bank interactions were collected. President Trump criticized the move as an infringement on attorney-client privileges. President Trump wants to deploy up to 4,000 troops to the southern border. Trump wants to send National Guard troops to the border until most of the wall is built. U.S. Department of Homeland Security says the amount of illegal crossings has gone up substantially over the past year. Troops are already getting deployed to Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. The California governor has not announced whether troops from his state will, be, will participate. Uh, they will still be planning, pro they're still in the planning process, but are acting fast to get troops deployed to the border states. As you guys can see, we did have a pretty cold morning this morning, and that's all because of this low pressure system that got built up in the northeast corner. And what's that going to do? It's going to bring a cold front mostly all through Colorado State. And that should be here about most of the day and into tomorrow. Now, tomorrow morning, we're going to have this high pressure system that's going to build up in the west east corner, west south corner, sorry. And then as that moves through the state, it's going to push out all that moisture and bring us warmer and clearer skies. Now, for our forecast, uh, temperatures, we are going to be around 40 degrees today um, in the Denver area, which is, is going to be colder than the past few days. Now, tomorrow morning, we're going to be all the way down to 29, so it's going to be a little chilly as you go on to your morning commute. Now, Saturday, we're going to be around 41 degrees, and then Sunday morning, we're going to be at 33, and then Sunday night is when we're going to up our temperatures and it's going to be a little warmer for us. Now for tomorrow, we're going to have a high of 54, partly cloudy, windy winds coming out in the north at 23 miles per hour. Now for our seven day forecast, we are gonna be pretty cold for today and we're gonna warm up a little bit through the weekends, um, but on Monday, we're gonna be all the way up to 78 degrees. We are gonna cool it down a few on Tuesday and Wednesday, but Thursday, we're gonna be back up to 66. Now, even with all this cold weather, we are still seeing spring in the air. Um, this picture was taken by Josh Kozart of beautiful flowers that are bloom blooming for spring. Now, if you have any pictures, please send them to us through our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Drop that baby. Met Radio on MyMetMedia.com.
a million dumb ways to die. Don't let it be around buses and trains. Be safe around buses and trains. A message from RTD. So many dumb ways to die. Hello and welcome to EMET. I am Avery Anderson and this week I have a lot of great stories including a look at the national tour of Aladdin. But first, let's start local and look at the Aurora Fox. Tonight, the regional premiere of the groundbreaking show Passing Strange opens at the Fox. This rock musical is about a young boy and his journey not only to discover himself, but his art. This exhilarating show is presented with an all-black cast and was originally nominated for seven Tony Awards, including Best Musical, winning one for Best Book. The show was originally produced by Jed Bernstein, who recently took a position as the produ producing artistic director for Theater Aspen in Aspen, Colorado. This intensely beautiful show plays until May 13th. I say before it's a black story, it's an American story, because I think it's a very American thing to, um, to go out into the world, you know, and, 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 and bring parts of you with it. Keeping it in the arena of theater across town from the Fox is Aladdin playing at the Buell Theater. I caught up with Denver native Selena Nightingale, who is a dancer in the show. Hi, I'm Selena Nightingale, and I'm in Aladdin as one of the female ensemble. I actually started my training right here in Denver. I went to Hill Academy of Dance, and then I trained a little bit here and there at Cleo Parker Colorado Ballet. Then I went to LA, really, after I graduated from the University of Denver. Nightingale visited her alma mater, Lutheran High School, and talked with the students about her journey. So good, good to see those people, but it was really nice being that Lutheran is a smaller high school to go and show those kids that like it doesn't matter where you came from, where you come from, and you can do whatever you want. And although she grew up in Denver, Nightingale never visited the Buell Theater, where she is now performing. I don't think I saw my first like, actual show show until I was in it, and that was Aladdin in California at uh, the park, which was a very big show. My mom's like, remember when we saw Lion King together? I was like, that wasn't me, Mom. <laughs> You yeah, never took so. me. <laughs> it was my sister, so I got to go. You will recognize the songs. All of the songs are from the movie, or the new songs that you will hear were actually written for the movie and just didn't make it in. The storyline is essentially the same, but there are a lot of new characters introduced. There are some characters you won't see. It is a more developed story. Obviously, it is a Broadway show, so it's two and a half hours. But you are going to get those nostalgic songs and feelings that you got from the movie, The Genie's Hilarious. I just think it's a story that everyone can relate to. It's a grown-up romance, so, I mean, kids and adults alike really can relate to it. And who doesn't want to go on a magic carpet ride? I mean, that's awesome for a date. Now, if theater isn't your thing, First off, boo-hoo, I'm sorry, give it a try. Secondly, I guess it's fine, I can still live with it. I do have some cool must-sees for you to check out. Based on the 1998 film of the same name, the Netflix reboot turns the outer space story of the Robinsons into a new streaming series. The show has got initial positive reviews for its acting. The show seems to have the same issue the movie did, though, in that the drama and family conflict does not seem sustainable, making the future of the show seem uncertain. <sighs> Joe Paterno, the winningest coach in college football history. Dad, did you know about Jerry? Our second must-see is a new HBO film, Paterno. Centered on Joe Paterno and the Jerry Sandusky scandal, the film looks at Paterno's involvement. Al Pacino plays the award-winning coach, and although the film is getting stellar reviews from subscribers and viewers alike, it has received some backlash from former players. 
A statement signed by almost 300 Penn State football lettermen has said that the film does not tell the whole story and does not have all the facts. He went in the pool with the kids. Jerry did? Our kids? Yeah. What are you saying? I'm saying you couldn't have known. Otherwise, you wouldn't have let them go in the pool. Right? Now, if you want to get out and do something instead of staying and watching, there are always a plethora of fun and interesting things to do in Denver, but these two are the ones that I think you should definitely check out. If you ever wanted to explore the Rhino Art District, well, this might be the perfect chance. Drink Rhino Presents Spring Training Bar Crawl is a bar crawl to to different spots in the area with various drinks from local bars, breweries, and distilleries. The twist is that you have to work for those drinks. At every stop, you have to perform a designated workout ugh, in order to get your drink on. And for a more uh, family-friendly event, maybe check out the Rodeo All-Star at National Western Complex. Check out some of the country's biggest rodeo stars as they compete April 13th to the 14th. One date, two people, and every single voice in their heads. First Date, Broadway's hilarious musical comedy is now playing at the Garner Galleria Theater. Tickets at denvercenter.org or call 303-893-4100. Metropolitan State University at Denver, our mission is to provide high-quality, accessible education that prepares our students for successful careers, postgraduate education, and lifelong learning in a global and technological society. Our values of diversity, access, and community help us provide opportunities for our students from all over the globe. In fact, we've just been named a diversity champion by Insight into Diversity Magazine for 2016. Because at MSU Denver, we believe in transforming lives. Hello everyone, Luna Nas here with another MSU Denver sports update on this fine Friday the 13th. Let's get it started with some softball as the ladies took on Shadron State for a four game series this past weekend. Taking you to the last game of that series, pitcher Kylie Burnside was heating up on the mound, striking the Eagles out early. And then sophomore Megan Sandsburn with a sneaky bunt play, and she's safe for the hit single. This was a strong defensive showing for the Royal Runners. And speaking of defense, peep this double play as the bases were loaded for Shadron State. MSU Denver comes up with a huge defensive stop, and the Royal Runners would soar past the Eagles 3-0 to, to complete the four-game sweep. They improved to 23-19 overall, 18 and 10 in the R match. Well, the NBA playoffs kick off tomorrow and the field is set. The Denver Nuggets will be on the outside looking in for the fifth straight season. They barely missed the playoffs cut, losing to the Minnesota Timberwolves for the final eight seed. Minnesota will be playing the number one seeded Houston Rockets, who added Chris Paul in the offseason. Houston could be a real threat against the Golden State Warriors to come out of the West, led by potential MVP James Harden. The defending NBA champs Golden State will be without Steph Curry until at least the second round, but all signs point to a Rockets-Warriors clash in the West. In the East, however, who will stop the Kings' reign? LeBron James is poised to make his eighth straight finals appearance. There's the Raptors and the Sixers and the injury-riddled Celtics, but LeBron James looks like he'll make yet another finals appearance. 
But I do have to say I am disappointed we won't see Kyrie Irving in the playoffs this year due to season-ending surgery. Get well soon, Uncle Drew. From Billy Goats to Madden cover curses, the sports world is filled with superstitions. In honor of Friday the 13th, take a look at what quirky superstitions our MSU Denver athletes have. I walk back and I hit the ball twice, like I did it flat on my hand, and then I bounce it three times, spin it, and then like I naturally kind of hold my hand up and then go. When the national anthem plays, I count on the stars and the flag every time. I put sunscreen on before every game, and if I don't put it on, I feel kind of weird. Before every singles point, I dribble the ball ten times, and then I bounce it six times before I serve. All this in the future. The uh, future gets me hyped. I can speak for myself and the team. All of us like to use a certain number, so with our golf balls, we each have numbers one through four, typically, and all of us have our different numbers, so a couple of us only use ones and twos, like me. I only use a one or a two, and then other girls like to use just threes or just fours. Um, with a teammate, we, we like to drink McDonald's coffee before games. Kind of right before each game, I, uh, I always have to put on my left sock, my left boot first, and then I got to do my right sock, my right boot, and then I have, to, I have to go left to right. That's just something I have to do, and like my ponytail has to feel right, and if not, I just keep doing it. I think max record was like five times redone. Well guys, I don't know if you guys knew this about me, but I was actually born on a Friday the 13th, and I personally gotta have my uh, bracelets on because I feel like they give me a, a little bit of a look. Right, um, well, my biggest superstition is uh, not opening up umbrellas indoors. Yeah, and you might need them, uh, those umbrellas outside today because, as you can see, our seven-day forecast, it is going to be pretty cool today. We are going to warm it up through the weekends, but then Monday and Tuesday, we are going to really warm it up with 78 degrees on Monday. Cooling it down a few, and we have a pretty good week. That's all the time this week we have on the Met Report. And don't forget to tune in every Friday on Campus Channel 20 and Comcast Channel 58. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter and at MyMetMedia.com.